The surface of the Sun radiates light and heat at approximately 5,500 degrees Celsius. The Earth is much cooler and so radiates heat back away from itself at much longer wavelengths, mostly in the infrared range. The idealized greenhouse model is based on the fact that certain gases in the Earth's atmosphere, including carbon dioxide and water vapor, are transparent to the high-frequency, high-energy solar radiation, but are much more opaque to the lower-frequency infrared radiation leaving the surface of the Earth. Thus heat is easily let in, but is partially trapped by these gases as it tries to leave. Rather than get hotter and hotter, Kirchhoff's law of thermal radiation says that the gases of the atmosphere also have to re-emit the infrared energy that they absorb, and they do so, also at long infrared wavelengths, both upwards into space as well as downwards back towards the Earth's surface. In the long term, thermal equilibrium is reached when all the heat energy arriving on the planet is leaving again at the same rate. In this idealized model, the greenhouse gases cause the surface of the planet to be warmer than it would be without them, in order for the required amount of heat energy finally to be radiated out into space from the top of the atmosphere. The greenhouse effect can be illustrated with an idealized planet. This is a common textbook model. The planet will have a constant surface temperature T's and an atmosphere with constant temperature Tar. For diagrammatic clarity, a gap can be depicted between the atmosphere and the surface. Alternatively, T's could be interpreted as a temperature representative of the surface and the lower atmosphere, and Ta could be interpreted as the temperature of the upper atmosphere. In order to justify that Ta and T's remain constant over the planet, strong ocean and atmospheric currents can be imagined to provide plentiful lateral mixing. Furthermore, any daily or seasonal cycles in temperature are assumed to be insignificant. The model The model will find the values of T's and Ta that will allow the outgoing radiative power, escaping the top of the atmosphere, to be equal to the absorbed radiative power of sunlight. When applied to a planet like Earth, the outgoing radiation will be long wave and the sunlight will be short wave. These two streams of radiation will have distinct emission and absorption characteristics. In the idealized model, we assume the atmosphere is completely transparent to sunlight. The planetary albedo alpha p is the fraction of the incoming solar flux that is reflected back to space since the atmosphere is assumed totally transparent to solar radiation, it does not matter whether this albedo is imagined to be caused by reflection at the surface of the planet or at the top of the atmosphere or a mixture. The flux density of the incoming solar radiation is specified by the solar constant S0. For application to planet Earth, appropriate values are S0 equals 1366 Wm2 and alpha p equals 0.30. Accounting for the fact that the surface area of a sphere is four times the area of its intercept, its shadow, the average incoming radiation is S0 quarters. For longwave radiation, the surface of the Earth is assumed to have an emissivity of 1 i.e., the Earth is a black body in the infrared, which is realistic. The surface emits a radiative flux density f according to the Stefan-Boltzmann law f equals sigma t 4 where sigma is the Stefan-Boltzmann constant. A key to understanding the greenhouse effect is Kirchhoff's law of thermal radiation. At any given wavelength the absorptivity of the atmosphere will be equal to the emissivity. Radiation from the surface could be in a slightly different portion of the infrared spectrum than the radiation emitted by the atmosphere. The model assumes that the average emissivity absorptivity is identical for either of these streams of infrared radiation, as they interact with the atmosphere. Thus, for longwave radiation, one symbol epsilon denotes both the emissivity and absorptivity of the atmosphere, for any stream of infrared radiation. The infrared flux density out of the top of the atmosphere F equals E sigma T A 4 plus 1 minus E sigma T S four 
Display style f up arrow equals epsilon sigma t underscore a carrot four plus one epsilon sigma t underscore s carrot four. In the last term, epsilon represents the fraction of upward longwave radiation from the surface that is absorbed, the absorptivity of the atmosphere. In the first term on the right, epsilon is the emissivity of the atmosphere, the adjustment of the Stefan Boltzmann law to account for the fact that the atmosphere is not optically thick. Thus epsilon plays the role of neatly blending, or averaging, the two streams of radiation in the calculation of the outward flux density. Zero net radiation leaving the top of the atmosphere requires minus 1 4 s 0 1 minus alpha p plus e sigma T A four plus one minus E sigma T S four equals zero Display style frac one four S underscore zero one alpha underscore P plus epsilon sigma T underscore a carrot four plus one epsilon sigma T underscore S carrot four equals zero. Zero net radiation entering the surface requires one four S zero one minus alpha P plus E sigma T A four minus sigma T S four equals zero Display style frac one four S underscore zero one alpha underscore P plus epsilon sigma T underscore a carrot four sigma T underscore S carrot four equals zero Energy equilibrium of the atmosphere can be either derived from the two above equilibrium conditions, or independently deduced two E sigma T A four minus E sigma T S four equals zero Display style two epsilon sigma t underscore a carrot four epsilon sigma t underscore s carrot four equals zero. Note the important factor of two, resulting from the fact that the atmosphere radiates both upward and downward. Thus, the ratio of tau to t's is independent of epsilon. T a equals t s two one four equals T S one point one eight nine Display style T underscore a equals T underscore S over two carat one quarter equals T underscore S over one one hundred and eighty nine Thus ta can be expressed in terms of T's, and a solution is obtained for T's in terms of the model input parameters one four S zero one minus alpha P equals one minus E two Sigma T S four Display style frac one four S underscore zero one alpha underscore P equals left one frac epsilon two right sigma T underscore S carrot four or T S equals S zero one minus alpha P four sigma one one minus E two one four Display style T underscore S equals left frac S underscore zero one alpha underscore P four sigma frac one one epsilon over two right carrot one quarter The solution can also be expressed 
Ed in terms of the effective emission temperature T, which is the temperature that characterizes the outgoing infrared flux density F, as if the radiator were a perfect radiator obeying F equals sigma T4. This is easy to conceptualize in the context of the model. T is also the solution for T's, for the case of epsilon equals zero, or no atmosphere T E S zero one minus alpha P four sigma one four Display style t underscore e equivalent left frac s underscore zero one alpha underscore p four sigma right carrot one quarter. With the definition of t, t s equals t e one one minus e two one four. Display style t underscore s equals t underscore e left frac one one epsilon over two right carrot one quarter. For a perfect greenhouse with no radiation escaping from the surface, or epsilon equals one t s equals t e two one four equals one. One hundred and eighty nine T E T A equals T E Display style T underscore S equals T underscore E two carat one quarter equals one point one eight nine T underscore E Q quad T underscore A equals T underscore E Using the parameters defined above to be appropriate for Earth T E equals two hundred and fifty five K equals minus eighteen C Display style T underscore E equals two hundred and fifty five tilde mathram K equals minus eighteen tilde mathram C for epsilon equals one T S equals Three hundred and three K equals thirty C Display style T underscore S equals three hundred and three tilde mathram K equals thirty tilde mathram C for epsilon equals zero point seven eight T S equals two hundred and eighty eight point three K T a equals two hundred and forty two point five K Display style T underscore S equals two hundred and eighty eight point three tilde Mathram K Q quad T underscore A equals two hundred and forty two point five tilde Mathram K This value of T's happens to be close to the published two hundred and eighty seven point two K of the average global surface temperature based on measurements. Epsilon equals 0.78 implies 22% of the surface radiation escapes directly to space, consistent with the statement of 15% to 30% escaping in the greenhouse effect. The radiative forcing for doubling carbon dioxide is 3.71 Wm2, in a simple parameterization. This is also the value endorsed by the IPCC. From the equation for F Display style f up arrow delta f equals delta e sigma t a four minus sigma t s four Display style delta f up arrow equals delta epsilon left sigma t underscore a carrot four sigma t underscore s carrot four right. Using the values of t's and tar for epsilon equals zero point seven eight allows for delta f display style delta f up arrow equals minus three point seven one wm minus two with d equals point zero one nine. 
Thus a change of epsilon from 0.78 to 0.80 is consistent with the radiative forcing from a doubling of carbon dioxide. For epsilon equals 0.80 T S equals 289.5 K Display style T underscore S equals 289.5 tilde mathram K Thus this model predicts a global warming of delta Ts. Topic 1.2 K for a doubling of carbon dioxide. A typical prediction from a GCM is 3 K surface warming, primarily because the GCM allows for positive feedback, notably from increased water vapor. A simple surrogate for including this feedback process is to posit an additional increase of d equals 0.02, for a total d equals 0.04, to approximate the effect of the increase in water vapor that would be associated with an increase in temperature. This idealized model then predicts a global warming of delta Ts. 2.4 K for a doubling of carbon dioxide, roughly consistent with the IPCC. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Extensions. The simple one-level atmospheric model can be readily extended to a multiple-layer atmosphere. In this case, the equations for the temperatures become a series of coupled equations. This simple model always predicts a decreasing temperature away from the surface, and all levels increase in temperature as greenhouse gases are added. Neither of these effects are fully realistic. In the real atmosphere, temperatures increase above the tropopause, and temperatures in that layer are predicted and observed to decrease as GHGs are added. This is directly related to the non-grayness of the real atmosphere. See also Greenhouse effect Anti-greenhouse effect Climate change Climate forcing Earth's energy budget Earth's radiation balance Global dimming Global warming Footnotes